right, welcome everyone to the EKG case of the week for December 18th, 2011. We've got an interesting case for you. It's actually a rhythm strip type of case, and we'll move right into the case. This was a patient that we saw maybe about a week ago, actually. It was a young woman who, uh, even though it was relatively young, she had already developed several cardiac risk factors. She smoked cigarettes. She's got hypertension and doesn't really take her medications regularly, and she's also got insulin-dependent diabetes and is not too great about taking her insulin. As a result, for many years, she's had very poorly controlled diabetes. She's only in her 40s, but she's already had several toes amputated on one foot after a previous bout with a really, really bad diabetic foot infection. And now she's coming into the emergency department complaining of pain in the other foot. And you go in the room and you clearly see another nasty diabetic foot infection. She's probably got some osteomyelitis under there. Surgery got consulted, and it didn't take long for them to decide that later in the day they're going to have to take her to the operating room for another uh, midfoot amputation on this newly affected side. So very unfortunate case. She's relatively young, but she's got really, really bad disease. And anyway, while she's waiting in the emergency department, waiting to go up to the operating room at some point later in the day, the nurse comes running out and says that this patient just had a run of ventricular tachycardia. How do you know? Well, it's because the monitor, let me change the color there, it's because the monitor says it's ventricular tachycardia and you know that the monitor is always correct, right? Well, the nurse is concerned about this patient and maybe a few other people are really concerned. People are saying, we got to send off cardiac enzymes, we got to maybe start her on an amiodarone drip or some type of drip. And we got to consult cardiology, and there's no way she ought to be going to the operating room until she's stable because she's going to have a cardiac arrest on uh, the table in the operating room. She's not fit to go for this surgery. So you take a close look at the EKG strip, and it kind of does look like a particular type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that we refer to as torsade de point. That is the best French I've got. So I'm just going to call it torsade. Right? And why do you call it torsade? Well, classically, torsade is defined as polymorphic ventricular tachycardia that is associated with the prolonged QT. Now, if you look over here, when she spontaneously converts back to sinus rhythm, it doesn't look to me like she's got a prolonged QT, although honestly, I can't really see good T waves there to start with. But I will tell you that she had had an EKG earlier in her ED stay with a normal QT. So th there's really no... QT issues here, but the morphology of this particular polymorphic VTAC sure as heck looks like classic torsade. The strip seems to go from small to maybe out here in the middle portion. It's a little bit bigger, then maybe a little bit smaller out here, and then it converts back to sinus rhythm. And typically, when we see QRS complexes in VTAC going from small to big to small like that, <clears throat> in a fairly smooth pattern, then that's very classic for torsade. Let's look at a couple other cases of torsade just to really hammer this home. <clears throat> so if you look up here, you'll see another example where the QRS complexes are big, then they get smaller, then they get big. The other thing that you'll notice is that there's a relatively smooth transition from the big complexes to the small complexes and then back to the big complexes. Here's another example of polymorphic VTAC and also known as torsade. Now we definitely know this is torsade because you even see a prolonged QT after the patient spontaneously terminates. So that really confirms that this is the torsade type of polymorphic VTAC. But once again, I want to point your attention to the fact that the QRS complexes are somewhat smaller here and then they get somewhat bigger and then maybe they get a little smaller there. And the other thing that you'll notice is that there's a somewhat smooth transition across the complexes there. Let's go back to the case at hand. Now, what you notice out here, the patient is spontaneously converted, and the complexes overall appear to be small there, and overall they kind of appear to be a little bit bigger, and maybe they get smaller right before the conversion. But when you look for that smooth transition between small to big to small to big, well, there's something that happens here. Boom, you suddenly run into a complex right there 
which jumps out as a little bit taller. Then it gets smaller again, and then boom, suddenly you've got a big beat, then it suddenly gets smaller again for only two beats, then boom, you've got a big beat, and then smaller again for two beats, and then suddenly big, and then small for a few beats. And then, so you get the point here. That's not typical for torsade. I mean, you do get bigger to smaller to bigger to smaller, but not within the course of such a, a short span. Uh, and over here, what we're seeing is that you've got these occasional bigger beats that just jump out from the middle of nowhere, interrupting what would otherwise seem to be a smooth transition. And you know what? There's something else that's kind of unusual about those beats. If you, if you take a look at the intrinsic complexes after termination and you map these out, those map out at the same exact rate as these beats right here. And that is not typical, that's not normal for polymorphic VTAC or torsade, which really has no reason to have any regularity with the intrinsic rhythm. Let's go back and take a look at the strips I just showed you a second ago. Again, very nice smooth transition. There's no beats that are suddenly jumping out at you. Here's the second example I showed you. There's no beats that are suddenly jumping out and interrupting that smooth transition. So what the heck is going on here? Well, it's actually very simple. If your intrinsic rate is mapping out at the same rate or rhythm as those occasional beats that are popping out there, what it means is that these are intrinsically normal sinus beats and all the rest of that junk which is between those intrinsic sinus beats, that's nothing more than just artifact. That's all that this is. This is just sinus rhythm with a whole bunch of junk, a whole bunch of artifact that got thrown in there between those intrinsically normal beats. This is not torsade. This is nothing more than simply artifact which mimics the appearance of polymorphic VTAC. So does this patient need cardiac enzymes or a magnesium drip or an amiodarone drip or a cardiac evaluation, a stat consult or a trip to the CCU? Absolutely not. This patient needs to simply lay still, stop moving around so much. That's all that this is. This is just artifact. And if you didn't pick that up right off the bat, don't worry because this is a common, common mistake. In fact, I've seen two cases where artifact was mistakenly diagnosed as polymorphic VTAC in the emergency department. In one case, the patient got started on an amiodarone drip, which you know, even if this was torsade, amiodarone is the worst drug to put them on because it's going to prolong the QT. And anyway, the patient got admitted to the CCU, then the cardiology attending looked at it and said, this is just artifact, appropriately. Another case where the patient had artifact that looked just like polymorphic VTAC, the patient got started on a lidocaine trip in the emergency department, and then cardiology came down and said, turn off the lidocaine trip, that's just artifact. And it is something that they probably recognized better than we do because they see it more often with all the patients that they have on monitors in the CCU. It's something that is well published in the cardiology liter literature in the form of teaching cases and case reports. So it's common enough and tough enough that it even shows up in the cardiology literature and it's something that we have to know about in the emergency department also. So it is not uncommon and sometimes these are very tough but the key here is that when you see these beats that are jumping out and they're mapping out perfectly regularly like that at the same rate as the intrinsic beats, what it means is that everything else is nothing more than simply artifact. Admit to surgery, this patient needs to go to the operating room and get that diabetic foot infection treated appropriately and reassure the surgeons that this is nothing more than just artifact. And that's it. So hopefully this case was enlightening and helpful, and um, if not, then I guess you have to wait till next week. Either way, wait till next week and enjoy the holidays. Hope this case was helpful, and I will talk to you later on. Take care.